A 343 dev speaks out about the Forge leaks. Team Snipers actually going to play like Team Snipers. Some new leaked bundles with a recent update, which is really interesting stuff. As well as there being no more job openings for 343. If you want to know more? Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Chris Howard, who is a pipeline engineer for 343 Industries, recently tweeted this out about all the leaks when it comes to Forge, saying, I'm not going to lie, watching all these leaked Forge videos exploring the max number of static objects you can place specifically gives me life. That is awesome to hear. That was nearly a year of my life to get my part of that effort in. It was a crazy idea once and I'm still amazed we pulled it off. There have been plenty of videos like this from Karmaplex who kind of showcases all the levels of detail that this person was able to put together for just a simple apartment, which is a lot of little tiny details which are important to kind of create that atmosphere that you would want for a map. But once he steps outside this apartment, it kind of blows your mind that only 15% of the budget was used to create this map in the Forge League. Now, obviously, it's not the most detailed thing, but like, look at this. This is only 15% of the available data that could be used in Forge, and you're able to create a map that looks this great. I mean, this is pretty exciting stuff. Another example here is for Duquesne 23 video showcases that nearly 5,000 items were placed on the map. Obviously, they're the same item, just copy and paste it over and over, but hit almost the limit right here. You can see in the lower right hand corner of this video saying that it's about 72% of the max memory. This is how much he was able to place in the map until the game crashed, as you can probably see here in a few seconds that like it, obviously since it's very unstable as this was in a leaked build that it's not the most stable experience. And so it has had this issue. You can see right there now the game has officially crashed and left you know him sad boy times with not being able to play Forge anymore. And it looks like things are still on track for a September open beta when it comes to the Forge. It's not going to be a traditional flight. I mentioned this previously in a video, so I've kind of misused my language a little bit, even though flights have basically been open betas for the most part. Uh, but effectively, what this is going to be is just like if you want to jump in and play Forge early access, you can with the early access open beta that's happening this September. I've heard nothing about if it's going to be delayed or if they're going to do anything weird with it. So definitely keep an eye out for guys when we get a release date time i'll let you guys know here on the channel next on the list for awesome halo news team snipers is looking to play funny like actual team snipers right here this post was posted up by snickerdoodles here and talked about how they actually added in a new mode into team snipers which is just actually just team snipers right here uh it sounds like a odd request to have that happen but this is what they said right here saying featuring the s7 sniper rifle no secondary no grenades no os no camo on the maps only equipment pickups so you can play this mode in team snipers play starting today which was yesterday when they posted this up now shoddy snipes and brute snipes will remain in the playlist but on a lower rotation so 75 percent of the time you should be getting team snipers 20% of the time, shoddy snipes, and then 5% of the times, I guess for the memes and the lols with using the skewer and the mangler, 5% of the time you begin brute snipes. Which for this update, I'm just like, thank you. Finally, we just got team snipers. It's crazy to think that when you wanted to play team snipers, you actually wanted to use the sniper rifle. <laughs> Guy, how crazy to think about that. Especially when this play is first launched. I remember Covenant snipers, which per technically there really isn't much of a Covenant anymore in Halo lore. That's a whole nother story using the uh, pulse carbine and the stalk rifle. That just wasn't a good experience. I'm glad that's been kicked out of the whole thing. Then, you know, having shy snipes and team snipes, I'm okay with that rotation. And also having skewers in there. I mean, skewers with Whisper Reel, they're pretty fun to play around with. Plus, it's only 5%, so it's kind of more like a novelty kind of mode, which I think that's kind of how it should be if you're going to put that in the rotation. But this actually might get me to play Team Snipers and see if I can try to get better with the sniper rifle because when I play Team Snipers, I expect to use the sniper rifle? And now that's the case, so I'm very happy about this update. Next, we have some interesting bundles that are now within Halo Infinite that have replaced previous bundles as well as some leaked content with the recent update of the drop pod, seeing some Season 3 content that you guys might want for customization. First, let's start with the official stuff that's available for you right now. Along with tomorrow's Halo Infinite Drop Pod comes new HCS Regional Bundles. This was posted on Monday. I didn't get a chance to put it in my last video here. Saying that proceeds from each purchase will go to our partner teams to help grow Halo Esports in each respective region. 
like right here we have dream hack which would be europe then we have mexico and also the a and z area right here you can kind of see the bundle that we have to play around with honestly like it looks all right nothing too crazy in my opinion um i mean like it def definitely looks nice especially like the mexico one as well as this yellow and black one uh, the other two right here i'm just kind of like me with i don't really think i'll bother with buying them as uh, this basically would, has the same kind of coating that will replace what we had with the sniper rifles with season one but a nice addition if you want to help support the esports organizations in those regions next we have some leaked season three coatings coming for the hcs bundles for most likely for season three here and you can see they kind of mostly did a bit of a reverse black coloring when it comes to a lot of their coatings here but some of them are much different than what they previously have you can kind of tell this ones like sentinels optic this must be ssg the navi one looks pretty interesting not gonna lie i think it looks pretty cool right there you got g2 fanatic e united phase as well as cloud nine so no new organizations coming in with season three's release most likely which is kind of surprising is that that's when i would expect to see the new orgs to be announced though it doesn't really take that long to make a coding if you guys remember when envy was one of the launched party partner teams with hcs merged in with optic it took about like a month or two until the optic coding was available within the store that replaced the envious one brought to you by delta index for these data mined coatings right here you can see this is the new optic one kind of like a reverse like white coloring instead of the black coloring this actually does look pretty nice i'm liking it it's pretty clean here's a closer look at the navi one this one is actually kind of interesting i might actually splurge on this one because this definitely is a unique coating that we haven't really seen in halo i'm all about the more unique coatings when it comes to this game from one that purchases things plus they also do help support the organizations most of the other organizations are very similar to their coatings but they use much more of a black base when it comes to the coatings but ssg just went full on gold i'm a gold member on their coating right here just, went, just straight yellow which I mean, looks clean, looks nice, but then again, it's just yellow. You know what I mean? It's not too crazy. So unless you're an SSG fan, I don't really see a lot of people buying into them. Though it does make your battle rifle all gold, a yellowy color as well, which does look pretty nice. Though I would say compared to what we had for season one, they just didn't really look as great as season one coatings for season two. Obviously some are better, but for the most part, it's besides like the Navi one, which I really like, most of them are kind of just like the same, but actually less interesting. There are some of the leaked weapon charms that are most likely gonna be part of these bundles as well. So maybe you might be able to use your weapon charm along with your coatings and stuff like that with season three. My hopes, it makes sense. I mean, but they put bundles with coatings for season two and well, I mean, you can't use your charms with your coatings for the organizations that you paid for, but a lot of these look great. I think the Sentinels one does look rather fun. So keep an eye out for those when they go do go live. And while we're on the topic of HTS, it looks like fan favorite organization, Kansas City Pioneers have pulled out of Halo. This is really big news here, guys, especially since they're one of you know, top eight team in Halo, you know, fifth seed, as they mentioned right here, that uh, one of the players, Druck, said that my team is restricted looking for an organization to represent going forward in Halo, where the fifth seed going into the Orlando Major. So these players still want to play Halo and this coach as well, but it looks like they're not going to have the support of KCP. Chief Gaming Officer and Co-Founder of Pioneers, LJ Brown, had this to say, saying, official statement coming out from the Pioneers tomorrow, which would be today, when it's the time of making this video, it hasn't gone live yet, so anyway, the news is already out, but you guys you know, don't have the official statement yet, but basically, I'm sure it will say, like, basically, it's not financially viable, which would kind of make sense and why they're planning to leave HTS and say, no, it's not because we didn't get partnered. No, it's not because we didn't have the backing. And no, it's not because we placed eighth uh, for the first time in a major and an online one. I guess a little jab for making an online event. Though this tweet from the co-founder and chief marketing officer for Pioneers seems to be a little contradictory from that saying from a reply on Twitter here to the main post that we talked about just earlier, Thing. I wonder how much money KCP used at the Kansas City event to help promote HCS and has been denied partnership. They literally did the things no other org has ever done to promote Halo and HCS. I'd leave too. And he, he replies back with a bullseye. Like, that's on point. So even though it sounds like, you know, one of the co-founding members said that there, it's not because they didn't get partnered, but then another co-founding member says it's because they didn't get partnered in a way and feel kind of jaded from it, which I can understand the kind of, you know, feeling that they have. But, I mean, 
We'll see what the official statement is, but basically Kansas City Pioneers are no longer part of HCS, which is kind of sad because when I went to the Kansas City event, the fan base was crazy there. People were excited about KCP. If there was just like a simple out BR, you can hear across the entire event stadium event that like, oh, KCP did something really good while you're watching the main event over here, which is being relatively quiet. The over on the side stage of KCP is playing, you know that KCP is playing. Of course, that's an anecdotal personal experience, but something I think worth mentioning. And we've had orgs leave Halo already this year we, we, there are much more smaller organizations or at least the teams that didn't make as much of an impact as kcp has made with egg set as well as bbg and then also just recently torrent just left as well uh but kcp was the one was that was actually like a solid team that would actually make waves within halo has now officially left now the team still gotta try to stick together when it comes to playing Halo, but what organization might pick them up, we'll just have to wait and see. While we're on the topic of bundles and microtransactions, right? One of the users here on Reddit said, I can't wait any possibilities of season one bundles making their way back into the store anytime soon. And especially with the new cross core being implemented into Halo Infinite now, at least through visors and some helmet attachments, and though it will be increased with coatings and some other parts as well. Unishack Community Manager actually replied to this saying, some bundles may return in the future. If they do though, it may not be for a couple of months, hang in there. So if there were any bundles that you might have missed during season one, you might see them come back within season two. We've seen returning bundles of the same, within the same season come into the store, but nothing really from previous season nothing from season one we've seen return back in the Halo Infinite for season two and I bet you people would be more apt to purchase things with with more cross core customization available so we'll just have to keep an eye on that uh, I do usually do do shop updates every Tuesday guys to kind of keep you in line with up to date with everything that's going on when it comes to Halo but also get some actual information about what's going to be returning from season one you know, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. With the release of the August Drop Pod, it actually buffed the durability of a lot of vehicles. And Accelerate here on Twitter put together a video kind of showcasing how much more durable they are. You can see him throwing a few sticky nades onto a Warhog. Like one sticky nade, totally fine. A second sticky nade, still totally functional. A third one, that's when it actually blows up, which I believe previously it was only two grenades you really kind of needed to help blow things up like that. So you can kind of actually really see how much more durable the vehicles are within Halo Infinite and be much more viable within the BTB playlist. It takes four spike grenades. A fourth one didn't do anything. How about a fifth one? Does that actually stop it? No, spike grenades, they're pretty weak against vehicles. I would just wouldn't even bother with that. But it took like six spike grenades to actually have it put into a, you know, a critical state. That's kind of interesting. They also say that they can now eat nine frag grenades before entering the red state. And also tires now take two heat wave shots per tire better than one. So you can see the great damage increase that the vehicles were able to do within the game, which I am actually kind of all for that because I think the vehicles are still a little too easy to take down, a little needed some durability, I feel like, to really kind of last, especially with the increased player count uh, with a lot more options to counter vehicles in Halo Infinite compared to any other previous Halo game in BTB. Uh, I think this is a very good change for sure. That makes me want to jump in and do some more testing. Maybe I might make a video about it. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something you guys want to see. Lastly here, guys, very interesting thing just posted up on 343's website. Either this is a bug or this is actually true, but no more positions currently available. This is kind of interesting as, you know, as someone who pays attention to Halo and 343, I definitely have kept my eye on if there was any jobs that were potentially available that I could fill in. Most of the times I get posted on the website are most likely senior positions that I have zero qualifications for, but you know, I got a boy can dream, right? And most times there's always something available. And especially since 343 has been pressing on Twitter and also even like on YouTube and stuff like that with their channel page, saying that they're hiring, they're available, come work for us. And maybe all the positions are finally filled within 343. Could this possibly see the improvement of the pipeline when it comes to content creation for Halo so that we can actually like talk about things happening with the game. Could season three possibly only be three months as promised before the launch of the game? That's all just speculation. So it's either a excellent sign that 343 has all their jobs filled, or could it be a concerning sign that most of the times they've always had some kind of job position opened at 343 and they're just not hiring right now? Could things be happening at the back end of Microsoft to maybe not wanting to hire more people for Halo? 
Again, it's speculation. There's a lot of things to think about, but I did think it was very interesting to bring out that they have zero openings right now at 343. And the fact that this either is a blessing that hopefully all the positions are filled that they need filled that they can hopefully kind of get the ball rolling when it comes to creating content for this game, or things in the back end when it comes to Microsoft are not looking so great between 343 and Microsoft, but again, we just have to wait and see. If you're curious about the other changes when it comes to the August draw pod, far more than just visors and some minor changes here and there, I have a video right here talking about the 23 hidden changes that came along with that patch as well. So guys, wanna check that out. Thank you very much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'm gonna catch you on the next one. Peace out.